Hey everybody, Ryan, Emily, and Apache here, and today's day two. Uh, today, so she, I'm going to have Emily try to practice some of the skills that we worked on with Apache yesterday as far as learning to set his head. Um, Emily has been learning about how to use her reins less for slowing him down, or a lot less <laughs> for slowing him down. So she's been doing a lot of riding on a loose rein, working on steering him off her leg, and now we're going to start working on Emily's hands, and this is kind of a newer thing uh, to you. You don't, you don't have a lot of experience practicing picking up a soft feel, and so I thought this would be a good example for a lot of you guys that are new to the idea of picking up contact. I would like to also remind you that you want to have two things going for you. You want to have good impulsion, and you also want to have good steering off your legs before you're riding with contact. Um, so you don't want to be managing their speed and their direction with your reins. You want to be able to pick up the reins and ask for flexion. So then you might be thinking, well, I trail ride mostly, and I don't know why I need to ride with contact. But actually, it's a really good thing for your horse to learn to allow you to control them and have vertical flexion. Um, they can get very emotional when you do that. And so when you challenge them to be more confident and more comfortable with different types of pressure, the, the better trained they are, you know, the overall more of value you're putting into your horse. Um, so I think that's important for anybody to be able to do. Another thing that I think is important, um, have you ever been on a trail ride where there's like a cliff kind of on this side of the hill and you don't want your horse to take a step here, so you're hugging this side? Well, if you bend that horse's head to the left to avoid the cliff, then their feet might step off and they didn't know it. But if you understand these flexion ideas, you could pick your horse up and tip their nose to the right towards the, the area that you don't want to step on and move them off your inside leg or your right leg there and make sure you navigate around that safely. So there are times when you're trail riding even that you would pick up contact. So valuable for a lot of things. The biggest benefit is going to be in the horse using their posture better, um, getting more body engagement is the goal. Um, and, and a lot of times that can start with, with developing soft feel. So here we go. So Emily, I'm just gonna have you put them out on a circle and uh, just use your legs for steering. Now let's go to the right here. Okay, so what she's gonna do is she's gonna get her reins short. So go ahead and slide up on your reins. We don't want the horse to change rhythm relaxation. Now, she's, she, I want her to offer him a firm feel with the reins but not pulling back, just holding. And if he starts leaning on the bit, then you're gonna squeeze with your spurs, okay? And that was pretty nice that he got into that flexion and she did a good job. She got her range short enough right away. Again, I want you to just kind of stay over here in this, this area, Emily, if you can. <clears throat> so Emily needs to work on uh, her pattern. She needs to be more specific about where she's trying to head and that consistency is good for the horse to know where they're gonna go. So we don't wanna ride around randomly. Um, so you're kind of making an egg there. So kind of make a nice shape on the circle here. And the feel that you're offering with your hands is if he starts leaning on you right there, she's going to squeeze her fingers. She's got her elbows back in by her sides. There you go. Her posture is nice and upright. We're trying to keep our shoulders, our hips, and our, our ankles kind of in line there. So that basically if the horse disappeared out from underneath us, um, you would end up just standing on the ground. Very nice. Now again, if he, yeah, if, he goes to, if he goes to come out of the bridle right there, just kind of hold steady. Now we're not working on collection with him, we're working on just a basic mental understanding of soft feel. So emotionally, is the horse willing to let us control us in this position? And then mentally, does he understand that if he pushes into the bit, we're going to hold and we might add pressure with our legs. Now the reason we're adding pressure with our legs is because he previously learned how to push through the bit. So. So because he's already learned how to push through the bit, we got to come at it from another angle versus just trying to, to, to do more with our hands in that situation. Okay, so now we're going to ask him to go into a trot now. Keep him walking there, Emily. We're going to ask him to go into a trot, and what's going to be tempting for a horse to do is to come out of the bridle. Anytime you do a transition, it's a very easy place for a horse to lose flexion and come above it. So make sure your hands are right, focus up, and just softly ask him into a trot. She's doing a great job of keeping her range short. That, that is one of the biggest key, key elements. A lot of people are intimidated to, to shorten up their reins that much, but you really have to um, expect that horse to be able to stay in there. If you give them too much rein, keep your elbows back in by your sides. Very good. You give them too much rein, easy for that horse to come in and out, and then we end up being inconsistent. Um, one of the words that I like to say while we're working on this is you want to be reliable to the horse. You want to be consistent. So you don't want your hands bouncing, so try to isolate you can go ahead and rise at the trot. Yeah, and then her hands got quieter when she did that. So she was bouncing a little bit in her seat. And she is posting also on the correct diagonal, making it easier for that horse to move underneath her. Very good. 
He looks like he's feeling a little bit blocked, but that will come with time as he gets more comfortable with this. You're doing great, Emily. Now, next time you come around, I want you to come through the middle facing us and change directions to a left circle. So turn, use your focus. Now go straight and left bend, keep him in the bridle. So you kind of see he nosed up out of the bridle there. So changing directions is also an easy spot for the horse to lose flexion. Now you got you got your reins a little longer there again, so get, get yourself reorganized here. Inside leg there, so you can see he's kind of cutting in. So the last thing we want to do if he cuts in is pull him to the outside with your right rein. But I want to see you put that inside leg on him and step him wider right there, right there. Press, but see, don't let him tip his nose to the outside. So he's kind of he's kind of coming through that over here, counter bending. Keep his nose to the left, use that inside leg. And you're, you're gonna have to turn your toe out and put a little more pressure because he's, he's pretty committed to, to cutting that off. Inside leg, inside leg, there you go, good. Now next time you do that, I want you to stop in there and side pass out. So stop, 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 stop. Now side pass out, keep your leg on. Ideally her leg would have came on before she stopped because again, he's cutting that. Turn your toe out and ask him to move over. So he's actually pushing into her leg right there. Um, so she needs to hold. Don't let him walk, Emily. Don't let him walk. Just ask him to side pass over. There, release. Don't let him walk forward. So she has to be really particular about that spot. You don't want to pull the horse over with your reins. You want to press your leg on and wait for him to step off of it. And you can see by his response of actually pushing into her leg that she's maybe abandoning that cue a few times where he talks her out of it. And what happens is then the rider starts to try to use their reins more to put the horse's body where they want. But at this level, Emily, at this level, you need to be able to put your inside leg on and wait for him to step off. Keep his flexion on the inside, inside leg, inside leg, ask him to widen out, hold. Now stop him there, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't take your leg off. So you have to, she has to leave her leg in there. Get him over. Now, where you need to be at, Emily, is the spot of the foul. So right here is where he starts cutting in. You need to pick him up there and stop him with your leg on and say the only place for you to get relief, Apache, is to step off my leg and be out here on my circle, okay? So don't let him do any of that wandering, um, wandering steps. Inside leg, good. Inside leg, inside leg, keep his flexion to the inside. So we're gonna stop him again over here. So pick him up. Inside leg, now stop him. Uh, stop him, keep that leg on, good job. She kept that leg on, wait for him to step off of it. Press that leg on there and wait for him to step off. No, don't let him walk forward. Don't let him go forward. The only place for him to go, you gotta turn that toe out, is over there. Now, unfortunately, he's getting relief facing in exactly where he was trying to take you. He needs to be facing here and stepping over off your leg, okay? Let's try it again. Okay, right here, start to pick him up, inside leg, keep his flexion to the left. Stop him, stop him, stop, stop. Don't let him come over here. You gotta keep him squared up. Good, good, there you go. That's the step over that we needed. That's the moment we're looking for. But again, that needs to happen back here, because right here is where he cuts in. But we did leave him in a better direction this time. So location and direction are really critical with this. And um, <clears throat> until the rider learns to really set those boundaries, it's gonna be tempting for that horse to keep cutting in. And again, they get that counter flexion because that's innate for them. And also because riders that are learning how to use their legs or haven't learned how to use their legs yet, they ride too much with their reins and they just make the horse's body um, come over here to the outside. Let's do it one more time. But again, I wanna see that happen out here. So basically, we're right where I'm standing, that's where I want you to bring your leg on, expect him to step off of it. If he doesn't, pick him up and stop him and wait for him to step off. Keep that inside flexion, inside rein. Now stop, 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 stop. Good. Inside leg, don't pull him over with the reins. Yeah. So you feel like that's getting a little easier for him to step off? Very good. But again, you gotta prepare for that a little bit more over here, okay? <clears throat> we're still, to me, we're still ending up a little further than we want. We wanna start that here because right here is where he starts to cut in. We're gonna let him make a step or two, but again, we already know he's gonna cut off here, 
So we're teaching him the relief is over there, not cutting in on the circle. Okay, one more try. You're gonna get it this time, okay? Inside leg, inside rein. Yep. Now start putting that inside leg on. Try to widen now and stop, 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 stop. Yes, good job. She's in a great position. Step over and release. Whoop, don't let him walk off. Pick him up, step over. Don't let him walk off. Step over. Yeah, good. Very good. We, it was almost perfect. I think we're gonna try that again one more time. I think it can get a little bit better as Emily's getting more prepared on what to do here. Okay. The cool part about this lesson is she doesn't have to try to ride through this at a fast trot or at a canter. She can pick him up at a walk, at a standstill, and ask him to step over, and the meaning will be the same. So right here, bring your inside leg on, widen out, widen out, widen out. Inside leg, turn that toe out. Wait for him to step over. Yeah, there we go. So he's getting a little better at stepping off her leg. Now, what we could also do is take a mental note and say, before we even get to this lesson, like tomorrow's ride, I would warm him up doing maybe a lot of side passing on the fence and getting him to move off your leg a little bit better. I know he knows how to do that. Um, but that's something that'll really help this. Let's try it one more time. I wanna see if we can maybe get this horse to step off there at a walk or at a try, okay? Without having to come down to a side pass. So keep your inside flexion. Now inside leg, widen out, widen out. Beautiful, beautiful, and whoa. Very good. Could you feel the difference on that one where he stepped over without twisting his body that way? All right, great job. She did really good with that. That was kind of a tough lesson. She had to really own her responsibilities as a rider to set those boundaries and be specific with her cues. Also be consistent um, with, every, with the pattern, being reliable with her hands. A lot of things going on when you start to ride with contact. So the riders got to really up their game. I call it graduation day for a horse and for a rider when they get to this level that they're riding with contact and starting to guide that horse off their legs and using their reins to just set the flexion. So hopefully this helps you guys. Um, practice it with your horse. Get away from slowing them down and steering them off your reins. Don't be pulling on that horse for no reason. Teach them how to follow a feel off your leg and uh, you'll be amazed at the quality that comes with, with it. So give it a try and we'll see you guys down the road.